Hello everyone and welcome to our tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to analyze cash flow in Tableau using a waterfall chart. If you work in a financial industry, you may have seen this chart quite a bit, but if you're not familiar with the waterfall chart, don't worry because I'll show you how to build it, I'll show you how to read it, and I'll also share some additional formatting tips that will help you create a clean looking waterfall chart. So we'll start off by describing what cash flow is and why we use this metric across different industries. Then we'll take a closer look at the waterfall chart itself and examine its various components and information flow. And then the last portion of this video is going to focus on building the actual chart, formatting it in a user-friendly way, and then seeing some practical examples of how to use this chart to analyze transactions that drive negative cash flow. So what is a cash flow statement? Well, before answering that question, let's first take a look at the definition of cash flow. Cash flow is a metric that provides a quick view of cash inflows and outflows. A cash inflow refers to the money going into the business and a cash outflow refers to the money leaving the business. So essentially you're talking about gains and losses over time. Cash flow statements are an essential part of financial analysis for three important reasons. Cash flow statements show you liquidity, which means that they tell you exactly how much operating cash flow you have. They also show you changes in assets, liability, and equity, and this allows you to measure your business performance. Cash flow statements are also used to predict future cash flows or create cash flow projections, which is very important for making long-term business plans. So a cash flow statement can help you understand how your business is performing while providing clear financial insights. So what is a waterfall chart and where do we see it? A waterfall chart is a special type of visualization that helps us understand the cumulative effect of gains and losses over time. And for that reason, it's a really good choice for showing net cash flow. So essentially, it allows you to break down your monthly statements sequentially to show how your initial balance transitions to a final value at the end of the month. It's very common to see the waterfall chart being used in human resources to show things like attrition and growth, for example. And it's also very common to see it in the financial industry to show credit and debit transactions or gains and losses over the course of a single period of time. All right, so let me show you how to actually read this chart. So the waterfall chart must be read from left to right in a sequential manner. The very first value that you see here is your starting balance. So you're starting out with $1 million and then you're including your weekly gains and losses over the entire year. So week two shows us a cash inflow of 3 million. So now we have 4 million in total. In week three, there is a loss of 19 million and that brings our balance down to 15 million. In fact, we can easily identify our gains and losses with colors. I chose green to represent gains and red to represent losses. The gray column that you see at the end of each quarterly period is the final balance of our debit and credit transactions. So the waterfall chart is actually a very easy chart to build. So let's go ahead and take a look at the process. Let's start by bringing in our date fields into the view. So we're looking at quarterly information, which is broken out by week numbers. So we'll drag our date into columns and then choose quarter for our date part. Then we'll bring in the date field once again and then choose week number. Let's drag our balance field to rows and you will see that this is actually a table calculation which computes the running sum of cash flow. And cash flow is calculated by subtracting losses from gains. Next, we're going to change the mark type to a Gantt bar. Then we need to create another calculated field for cash flow which includes a negative sign in front of it. And this will allow you to create the waterfall look of each bar by filling in the area above or below each Gantt line, depending on whether you're looking at gains or losses. Once you add your newly calculated field to size, you will notice that this chart might be difficult to analyze without color. So let's play around with formatting. I'm going to drop cash flow on color and change the color palette to discrete by setting the step size to two steps. Let's choose red to represent negative values and green to represent positive values. There are various ways in which you can format the waterfall chart. 
I personally like to add an arrow pointing downwards to represent the direction of movement of cash flow in addition to adding color. And of course, you can choose to show both directions as well, but for this particular example, I was interested in analyzing negative cash flow, so I only chose a downwards pointing arrow. So let me show you how I did it. First, you need to create a dual axis chart by duplicating the balance measure, clicking on a duplicated field and selecting dual axis. Make sure to synchronize both axes as well. Then we need to change the mark type of the second visualization to shape and create a calculated field to label positive and negative cash flow. We're going to drag this field to shapes and assign a symbol to both cash inflows and outflows. We can choose a downward pointing arrow to represent cash outflows. And since we don't really care about showing the upwards arrow, what we can do is we can use a transparent custom image to denote cash inflows. So basically I downloaded a blank PNG file added it to my custom shapes folder, and now I can use it for my positive values. Now we need to add some color. So we'll drag our calculated field to color and pick a red color to represent the downwards movement. Let's adjust the size of the arrows to make them just a little bit bigger. Now we can bring in the totals by navigating over to the analytics tab and choosing subtotals. We can also add a thin border around each bar as well. So the reason why I include a shape in addition to color stems from the fact that color blindness affects over 300 million individuals worldwide. Now, the most common type of color blindness, which you guys may already be familiar with, is known as red and green color blindness. And there's actually a huge myth surrounding this term because people tend to think that individuals with this particular type of color blindness can't see red and green colors or they confuse the red colors with green colors, or they see red color as green and vice versa. But the truth is, is that colorblind people can actually easily confuse any color which has some red or green as part of the whole color. So for example, blue and purple can be confused because the red element of the color purple won't be visible to them. In fact, problems can arise across the entire color spectrum potentially affecting the perception of all reds, greens, browns, oranges, pinks, and even grays. And to add to the complexity, there are also different types and severities of color blindness. So including a shape in this case, in addition to color, can eliminate confusion. Back when I was doing my undergrad in biomedical sciences, I took a systems neuroscience course in my fourth year. And it was one of the most fascinating courses in my opinion. So if you guys want, I can create another tutorial and really deep dive into how we process color. Um, I can go over different types of color deficiencies and I'll finish off by summarizing how we can use this knowledge to create color blend palettes and use color effectively when designing dashboards. So let me know in the comments below if this type of content will be of any value to you or your team and I'll put something together. All right, so just to go back to formatting here for a second, the other thing that you can do with this chart to make it easier to read is draw horizontal lines connecting the edges of bars. So that way you can follow the lines as you move through the chart. And this makes it easier to trace the pattern across different elements. So if you wanted to add a line, all you would have to do is change the mark type of your second chart to a line. So we'll drag out the other fields, choose a path, and then we can adjust the width of the bars or the line itself. You can also change the mark type to a Gantt bar for your second visualization to get this look, which also gives you an idea of where cash flow is moving. At the end of the day, it's really just a personal preference, so choose the style that you think will be easy for your end users to read. Let's say we wanted to slice and dice our data to explain what transactions drive negative cash flow. What we can do is create a highlight table and combine it with our waterfall chart. And this will allow us to bring up specific transactions of interest to help understand what is happening at a more detailed level. All right, so this concludes our tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. Please leave your comments below and subscribe to our channel for more Tableau tutorials.